Hello, friends, and welcome back to another edition of Who's Your Caddy? It's been a few minutes. Glad to have our buddy, blatant underscore Liam, as they call him on the interwebs, back in studio. Heck yeah. Fresh fade, right off the lacrosse field, here to join us for what is considered the toughest test in golf this week, the United States Open Championship, live from Pinehurst, scene of Roy McAvoy's meltdown in Tin Cup, Martin Keimer's runaway win in 2014, as well as many other special memories, Payne Stewart, Michael Campbell, the rogue kiwi that won but uh we're gonna see a lot of pinehurst the next few years in the rotation for the u.s open um but how, what are we what are we feeling overall after another scotty victory yesterday at memorial beautiful finish I mean, with the wife absolutely and incredible kid. incredible that this guy just he's he's on a tiger woods type of dominance right now and uh nothing i've ever seen before really because I, I i didn't really watch you know golf when i was you know 10 11 years old when tiger was as dominant as he was so it's it's something definitely special to watch yeah i was i was a young lad but you know of course watching and this is unquestionably the closest we've gotten since then um just in terms of strokes gain metrics and just overall dominance like the guy hasn't hasn't had worse than a top 10 in any event his top 10 was only because he got canned i I, I mean had to spend the night in prison if you take out the prison night weekend he has seven top twos. I mean, he's five had, wins. He's had a he's had a baby, a major, a, a, an incarceration within the last two months. I mean, <laughs> he's still just winning towards. He's just winning. I, I mean, you knew it yesterday. That was the thing. It was like Morikawa had his chances. I don't know if you saw too much of yeah. the back nine, but you know he had chance. Scotty was giving him chances, which is rare. Um, but then when it came down to everything on eighteen, Morikawa had a, a crappy approach for his standards. And so did Scotty, but then Scotty chipped on and banged a five footer, which was kind of been his. You could you could just tell it was he was pumped to make that yeah. afterwards and shaking Jack's hand. It was an emotional scene. They had Jack up in the in the booth with Jimmy and Trevor, talking about how he's dedicating the the fiftieth memorial next year to Barbara, his wife. It was really beautiful to watch. Um, and I think the appropriate winner won. So can he go back to back with the U.S. Open? I mean, it's. I, I think almost I'm at the point where I'm just kind of thinking he's going to win, like assuming he's going to yeah. win, not just not being like, yeah, he's the favorite. Like, obviously, it's I, I think it's who can actually challenge him and how are they going to do that? Because I like that instead of picking who to win, yeah, who can challenge I, I, I just I just think you kind of assume Scotty's going to win. I mean, we're at that point. I, I hope not that I hope he doesn't win. Sure, I, I do hope he wins. Actually, he'll probably be my highest stone player. But like, I need some. I need a playoff. I need something crazy to. Ha- I, I yeah, can't have at least be a up stacked, five strokes. A stacked leaderboard going into Sunday. I'm starting I to fear that it could be Keimer again, where he's up five, six, seven, eight strokes, just like he's been at the Masters twice now. Um, but there are a few guys down the board a bit. I mean, I just top of the board. Shout out Bez for a great weekend. Bez, by the way. yeah, look good. Look Bez good. is, and that's going to be a continuation play. Uh, for me, we'll get down to him. Let's run through the board like we usually do here because there's a lot of guys to pick through. I don't want to waste a ton of time on a lot of the big dogs other than whoever you have a strong feeling could challenge Scotty. Um, you know, say in the outright market, 20 to one and down. And if we're looking at DraftKings pricing, let's say 9,000 and up. Scotty's at 13. So about 10 guys there. Yep, caught me at 20 to 1. Give me Bryson. Oh, there you go. Give me Bryson on the hammer, baby. Go ahead. Bryson Hammer. Is, and, I, and I'll, I'll don the Shinnecock hat now. Real golf right now. Okay. Get, I mean, that's straightforward. He's also. And I've always been a Bryson guy. I know people are starting to turn now, get onto Bryson, and think he's, you know, a good guy since he went to live now. I don't know how it's happening, but I'm a big Bryson guy riding him this week. Um, Yes. I think that. I agree in general. Obviously, dominated at Wingfoot. The only issue I have with Bryson is this course. Gave him the driver straight. It's very unique. Now, if out. he just goes ahead and even hits three wood and, and hits it straight, he'll be there. He was there at the Masters. He was there at Valhalla at the PGA. The issue, though, with, with that is Valhalla, Wingfoot, where he won his U.S. Open, he could just grip it and rip it, and he could do that at Augusta, too. You can't do that at this course. Now, there's several long par fours, but... It is very dangerous. There's similar to Augusta, no rough. Uh, I've played this course so many times on PJ on, on Xbox, dude. It, it was Oof. redesigned a little bit. It's the Donald Ross Classic course, been around forever. We we know a lot about it. Uh, Bill Core and Brent Crenshaw redesigned it a few years back. But overall, y- you have difficult tee shots. Uh, a lot of people are comparing it to Sawgrass, Pete Dye's course, where you have to hit certain points off the tee, or you will be in sandy waste area. It's it looks like a wasteland out there. It's it's beautiful, but. That just concerns me that low one scoring? low scoring. 
I, I think I think the U, the USGA tries to get it towards level par. The way that Scotty and some of the other guys <laughs> drive the ball, yeah. I'll say minus four is going to win. That's I'd, I would love to see I a tournament like that. I'm I excited. I'm getting sick I'm and sick tired of it. Of me it. too. Valhalla was fun. Birdies are fun. Don't get me wrong, but I'm ready for for the classic U.S. Open, firm and fast. That's the sense I'm getting, and that'll lead to one of my first hammer in a few minutes. But I mean, Morikawa has been so close, and I probably have him or Brooksy out of the other top guys because guys like Good Boy Victor, Rom, who's hurt and playing like crap, even Xander off the PGA, Rory, these are all great drivers of the golf ball, and that always helps, of course. But they're kind of more distance based. Now, Brooksy won at Shinnecock. I was there. Obviously, nightmare getting home in the LRR. Never forget that, but great <laughs> tournament. Uh, I want guys that are a little more, dare I say, Spethian, where they can use their imagination and make par from shitty circumstances because they will undoubtedly get unlucky bounces you, you can't just drive it you just raised my cam cam smith stock up to well, up 20 percent. I, I, I wanted to wait <laughs> now listen he's going to be popular okay but my new thing is if i like a guy and he's going to be popular just go overweight you yeah. know what i mean like i don't i'm not going to fade a guy if i like him now I don't know if you saw what he did yesterday in Houston. He shot 80. <laughs> However, the bright side is he was plus nine on a four-hole stretch on the back nine. He recovered, made a couple berries coming in, whatever. Not, I mean, Shane Lowry almost shot 90 yesterday, and I think you could make a case <laughs> for him next week. Romeo likes him for sure. I'm not going to be on him. But Morikawa, again, back to him. Another hammer, hammer, but obvious, so we won't go there with that. It's it's obvious. He's been there now, much like Bryson, the last two majors. Yeah. Deadly accurate off the tee, and it most importantly, improves with his short game and putting, which were kind of his sketchy parts. So you know he's great on approach. You know he's deadly accurate. And I just think there's a little bit of now watching Scotty beat him a couple times now in that final. I just, I think Morikawa, it's been coming for a long time. And you know me, I'm not a Morikawa he, no, guy. He has been lurking at, at a high extent. He's 9,400. You know, he's... He's thirty six hundred dollars. I never play him for some reason. It could be because you you just never are on him. But he is he he is lurking. But I'm, I also don't know if I can play him again. Like with Cantley right under him. I like Cantley this week. This kind of okay. Well, we're gonna get to that. Like the the mantra that I've had in my head with the U.S. Open is you don't find your form coming to the U.S. Open if you're not yeah. firing at all cylinders for the most part. Again, Cam Smith's been a little up and down, but look at his major record: top three in the U.S. Open last year. Top six at Augusta. I feel like this is always a round where Cantley gets going into the summer, though. At going into the week, I said, "Okay, he's going to Memorial. He's won there twice. Favorite course. I got to see something." And he was Nothing. shit. He this was terrible. Week. Yeah. I love the fact that his best friend Xander won the last major, but again, like I just said, I, I can't. Wyndham Clark defending. I can't play guys that aren't firing at all cylinders right now. Outside, Cam Smith is the only guy who's up and down because of his major record. Uh, and this year included won the open two years ago. I just think it's a, it's a Cam Smith type of course. So I'm going to go to him instead of some of those other guys we mentioned, even over a JT who I'll sprinkle a home, who I'm, a home. <laughs> can't, I like can't play JT home has been due home is due home is due do as anything. I like him. There's three guys actually in he'll, a row he'll here. He'll be in like my top five, top 10 parlay for sure. Cam Smith Homa. I mean, 8,600 now for these guys is nice. And you know, I'm going there. He was, he was right yeah, here at, on the hat. I watched obviously. him lurk. Watch him shoot a 64 on Sunday. Uh, he's been due for a long time. You know where I'm going with this. Lynx type of Lynxy setup. A lot of dangerous tee shots. Sawgrass, we've seen him lurk there. And he's coming in pretty hot right now. You can go your own way. Tommy Fleetwood Mac, 500 at a major. Uh, he's got three top fives in the seven U.S. Opens that he's played. Uh, 8,500 for Tommy at a, at a course where level par might be good enough for a top five. Yeah, I mean, Tommy, like, love you know, every time you say Tommy, love. he fills my lineups. I love Tommy. Love. I, when you're on Tommy, Tommy plays good. well. So double hammer to Tommy. We like that. God, it would be great if he could win after all these close calls. Such a good guy. You know, his caddy, Ian Finnis, had like open heart surgeries. He had a serious, so he's got a different caddy on the bag. Um, but regardless, I expect him to lurk. Is Bobby Mack's dad on the on the bag? Well, Bobby Mack just got in the field along with Adam Scott. Now, Bobby Mack, I, I he's that a party. Was crazy. No, I've never seen anyone withdraw from Memorial. Yeah, just a party. The most, one of the most like respectable top ten tournament easily to go back home and party after winning in Canada, which was great. Love him, and he makes a lot of sense. Good ball striker, excellent Lynx player. This isn't a Lynx course, but there's a lot of Lynxy elements to it. It's not on the coast, but there's a lot of those sand, those waste areas. It reminded me of Royal Melbourne when I looked at it, which makes me think heavy Australian. 
I'm hearing it's going to be firm and fast. <laughs> heavy tie hat and meltdown. No, no, no. Heavy tie hat and hammer. You're skipping ahead. You're skipping ahead. Um, Ty Hatton fits a I lot of trends Hatton. here. He's 7,800. Um, we love him. I don't want to skip over too many guys to get to him, but he's in this next, the 50 to one range and down. I love Ty Hatton. Again, one of the best links players in the world. Don't, doesn't have to go 20 under here. He's going to grind out pars. Amazing short game. Um, I just think that 7,800 for him at a major, at a course like this where you don't have to bomb and gouge, you look at the leaderboard. The pricing is crazy. This crazy week. pricing. You look at the leaderboards from the last two times they played here. Furyk was in both of them. If there's guys that are going to pepper fairways and greens and be, you have to have a good short game at this course. All the greens have this weird runoff, very similar to Augusta. Um, so again, Spieth and Hideki right there too. Actually, there's there's a few guys. Willie Z, okay, great for majors. I'm going to be less on him and more on a guy who top five yesterday. Uh, won the U.S. Open two years ago. Mm-hmm. Amazing links player. Deadly accurate. Great short game. The list goes on and on. Maddie Fitzy. Fitzy. 8,200. Um, won at Brookline. Again, has not played. It's been very up and down this year. But the fact that he top five at Memorial, very difficult course. Um, and Uncle Tony, too. 8,100. Another guy. U.S. Open lurker at Shinnecock. I, I keep thinking Shinnecock here because of that That sort of the, the fescue, the sand. I mean, that was more wide open than this is. Kind of Brooksy, just Brooksy and Dustin, actually, way down the board. We'll get to him. But I'm going to have to sprinkle Spieth, too. I know. I said you can't find your game. But 7,900 for Spieth it's at a be, U.S. It's Open. It's going to be so tough to get Chef and Scotty into these lineups at 13,000. Well, it's, I'm just piecing one together. It You're is hard. Need some absolute. It's hard. You, but now there is value low, in the 6K range values. when we get down there. So th- there's a lot of names here, veterans. You know, DJ. DJ's record in the US Open is incredible. He's but he's just he doesn't have it. Now he he did win this year on live. He won in Vegas like a few months ago. So it's yeah. not like he's completely off the radar. Jason Day, too, has had a pretty good record and was and lurked here last time. That's my vertigo boy right there. Yeah. I'd I I I think I'm gonna end up just light sprinkling both of them. Cam Young, a guy I couldn't wait to play. Another demon Jason deacon like Day. couldn't do it. I don't think I've played him I in mean, years. Cam Young just playing like crap. Day is playing eh right now, but Australian. U.S. Open, one at Whistling Straits. So you don't find your form here. Uh, yeah, no, you don't. So I'm going to be light. <laughs> I'm going to be very light. I'm going to be heavier on a guy who's has an uptick in form, uh, who has won in the state of North Carolina, uh, and just pretty much lurks at majors now every time out. 7,300. I think that's an egregious misprice uh, for the the man who starred at the President's Cup at Quail Hollow in North Carolina, Tom Kim. 7,300. If you're talking about the Furyk type mold that's going to pepper fairways, hit greens, have a great short game, uh, Tom Kim has showed up and his major record's looking yeah. really good lately. He's a guy I just like to root for. He's such a good, great uh, he's guy. got such a good aura around him. Great personality. Um, so there's actually a couple guys here now in the low 7K range where we're heading down. I mean, Min Woo Lee lurked last year at LACC from Australia. Um, 7,300. Great, great Twitter game. Great Twitter game, great short game, yeah. and good off the tee. I, they, I they worry correlate. he's a li- he could be a little erratic at times. I feel like he's similar to Bryson, where there's going to be one or two shots that we look yeah. at and say, "Oh God, he made a triple on that," and that kind of takes him out. I remember watching him in the woods somewhere, and he shot like a 14 on a hole, but it was it was legendary. Yeah. Um, but another guy who like there's there's three in a row again here that I like much like the upper 8K range. Sammy Burns, 7200. Now listen, bed. Bad, not not <laughs> mediocre. Bad major record. However, he's playing a lot better now this year. Seventy two hundred for him. Again, I'm gonna roll the dice on some of these guys that haven't played at great in majors in the past, but they should at this course. Where does Sammy Burns dominate? Southeast United States on slick champion Bermuda greens, which is what we're seeing here. Um, yeah, pretty good week at last week too. Been been really good. Uh, one or two bad rounds here and there, but just. Folks in this part of the country, guys that have had success in the Carolinas, in Florida, Valspar now, Sammy Burns won twice there. Um, Colonial, where you have to be deadly accurate off the tee. Sammy Burns can club down. I think he'll have his best major to date, which is only has to be a T20 or better. So I, in terms of value, I like him. And I like a guy who I haven't been on at all this year. You're going to give it to me? He's at 7,100. Oh, I thought you were going to my Canadian. No. Because <laughs> Come on. I'm going to tell you why I can't do it with Corey Connors or Benny on two guys that have had solid, Dude, he solid makes years. every single cut. 
He was tied for the lead, okay, a couple days ago. I've never seen an implosion like this uh, in my life. At, at Memorial, oh. just, just this oh, last yeah, yeah, week. Yeah. And I'm all over him. Him and Benny on, I, I don't, I need to see them be able to putt in a big spot before I can trust them. Can he, can he tee 20 prop, maybe? I just, I'm ta- if I'm talking about guys that could tee five, I want Sammy Burns and I want Atlanta Georgia's finest, not ludicrous, Sung J M. 7100 for Sung Jay. Look at look at his last few tournaments. He's uh, back in form. He's eight, coming back nine, to some home cooking. Eight, nine, four, 12. Difficult. A couple cuts in there. Difficult Bermuda track, though. Again, I want these Bermuda boys. That's our family. It, we, it says it on our hat. I wish I, I had one here I right now. I wear that hat all the time. Um, so sick. Bermuda boys. How about Mad Dog Russell Henley, 6900? Don't forget, lurked deep into the U.S. Open only a few years ago at Torrey Pines. Um, Slicky Ricky out. I'm gonna sprinkle him out of respect. Okay, out of respect. Out of respect for what he did last year, uh, tying lowest round in major championship history with a 62. Him and Xander were first round leaders in Los Angeles. Yep. I wanted to hammer Ricky. I bet him both that year. Yeah, I had him both first round leader. It was great, but it was dead heat split. I do vaguely remember that now. Last year, um, and again was runner up here in 2014 when Kymer ran away with it. Ricky was. So him and Justin Rose were kind of my two last guys because Rose had a nice little renaissance this year. But I'm going to take Ricky because I like kind of how his game fits better here. Great links record, um, great short game in putting. I, I just hope his ball striking can somewhat put him in contention. I would love nothing more to see Ricky somehow pull this out. Let's not forget now. Phil Mickelson, who we'll get to way down the board, won the PGA at Kiowa. Another difficult linksy element course as a major out of nowhere, 200 to one, I think Phil was. Yeah. Some of these older veterans that have played Pinehurst for 20 something years, they don't have to get to 20 under. They just need to lurk around level yeah. par. Um, I think you got to sprinkle some of these guys in the low sevens and six ranges, the the day, Dustin, some of these guys that just maybe they have had up and down year, um, but have proven that they can lurk in a difficult tournament like this. I mean, that's that's kind of the end of the seven K range now. There's a big six and five range because of the pricing at the U.S. Open. So many guys, and man. there's a lot of guys I so like. So many like decent guys. There's yeah. a lot of family members that could that I see. I'm talking T10 upside for some of these. Give me <sighs> give me a couple guys that stick out to you first, and then I'll rip through a few because there's there's quite a few here. Looking at Tiger at 6300, oh. if he can match 6400, if he can manage his way around this course a little bit, I think he, he, like he could give you some good value there. I don't I don't know if it was confirmed, but I did see on the Twitterverse he shot 29 on the front. Yesterday in the practice <laughs> round. So listen, can yeah, talking about even par, picking his way. It's a very this course is flat. Okay, not like Augusta where it's gonna be a hard walk. This is a relatively easy walk for Tiger. The weather should be pretty warm. Um, can he just hit his his old fashioned two iron stinger? Yeah, uh, like a McAvoy special, and just somehow just be in contention. If he's in contention, I, we love it. Yeah, he he can't come chasing down Scotty five. It's not gonna no, happen. Not at all. In, in contention, if he loses it, like he sort of loses a little bit right now. You sort of see like if he gets on edge, he just sort of lets go. Yeah, I listen. I'll probably sit back and let Tiger lurk and just be so happy to watch it on Father's Day. That would be a, a great a great finish. With I will. I won't put myself in position to to just watch it. There's he'll, a, he'll be in a lineup. Right I too. mean, if we're talking now, there's there's a few guys here that continuation on the Bez. Obviously, we're gonna talk about that. We'll get but. to Bez because no, I mean, there's a lot of guys here. Like, I think we should spend a, a good few moments on this. My number one play here again. If there's guys that's a toss up, I want to root for guys that we like have local ties here for us. Of course, at Wheatley Hills and St. John's, Keegan Bradley, sixty eight hundred. Now lurked here in twenty fourteen. That's a long time ago, but he's got two wins over the last two years. He's got a ton of top tens. How good has he been playing lately? Now he yesterday I'm gonna write off. He was much like Cam Smith. He yeah. was like six over through his first four holes yesterday. A lot yesterday was very difficult. He had a brutal he shot like 160 on the weekend. Yeah, terrible. But was again right there lurking, has a, several top twenties recently. Great ball striker. Um, great short game. The putting can be tricky, but he is good on faster greens, which we're gonna see this week. So for sixty eight hundred in a major, a guy already has a PGA. Um, kind of having a bit of a late year, uh, a late career renaissance. I love Keegs. You know, I love cousin Harris. I'm, I, I'm going back to him and cousin Denny, the two cousins, same price, 6,700. Now Denny's been playing a little better than Har- Harris has not played well, but let's not forget the three top fives in the last four U S opens. You know, I have the, the bias on him with, with the, uh, major parlays, but regardless, the guy just shows up for U S opens. 
So a guy that has that good of a record, I can I can excuse some sketchy recent form for another southeastern based guy on slick Bermuda greens. The setup is all there for Harris and Denny to both pepper fairways and hit putts, which is what you have to do here. More important than being long. Um, I, so I'm I'm going to be on them. I'll probably sprinkle Billy Ho because he's been playing better. Again, southeastern Bermuda. This is a trend yep. we're seeing. Um, and then another guy who Romeo loves, I like, um, had a top 10 last year in the U.S. Open, is, is a serious player, won at another difficult southeastern Bermuda track at the Honda Classic this year. Austin Eckroat, 6,700. Um, again, looking for those parallels of the southeastern Bermuda lurkers this year. Yeah. So I, three guys right there, 6,700, like them all. And then we're going to go down to a guy who's popular, uh, Cousin Harris's teammate, uh, the Austrian Bulldog, as we call him. Again, going to be popular, but I have to go overweight. Sepp, he's got four top fives in his last six starts. Yeah. He, he's wait, he's got actually six. He's on, on an absolute bender right now. He's got six top 16s last seven starts with one miscut. I, I got to ride the hot hand, 6,500. Even if you're telling me he's going to be 15, 20% owned, uh, I got to go overweight with that. I just got to do it for a guy back in, in the native. He's been He's lived in Atlanta. Yeah, it's, that's some nuts pricing right there. He gets no respect. Actually, Valdosta, I think, is his home down. He moved here from, from Austria when he was 14. So he's been here for most of his life. Um I, I just love him. I'm, I got to go back to him. And uh, Akshay, probably go back to him. You know, North Carolina based. Played great at Memorial last week. I'm not usually an Akshay guy. If the wind picks up, he's great in the wind. Um, Ryan Fox, big hitting Kiwi. Could he follow up Michael Campbell's shock victory here before Keimer? Could be. Um, you mentioned Bez. We got a continuation play. Great love, putter. Kiowa Lurker. Hadwin. I wasn't going to play him, but was there to the end with Scotty yesterday. Also, him and Connors are playing for that second Canadian Olympic spot, which Nick Taylor has because he won yeah. that. So the, the other guys, Mac Hughes, also sneaky, um, great putter. They're going to be lurking. Cam Davis, an Australian who I usually don't play, not great major record, um, but course fit. Uh, and then probably my last favorite guy is my namesake, JTP, the postman, Carolina All right. boy. All right. Great putter. Again, if there's going to be one of these guys, either Denny Poston, one of these short, deadly yes, accurate. Someone someone down here is lurking for sure. I mean, great putter on fast Bermuda. Uh, he might, Poston might be the best on fast champion Bermuda. So, again, you, I, these guys don't have to go so low. They just have to save par. Um, we mentioned Phil before. There, uh, there's only a couple we'll more guys. We'll start getting real sick under the 60. Give me 60, one or two sicko specials, and I'll give you one or two more. I mean, who else? He's... Who do we like down here? This is, I know, a lot of these guys you, I think we can just totally write off, but there's like two or three more that I think could seriously top 10 down here. I mean, just no one, no one's in great form down here. There's one guy that's in Scaldinish form. Actually, there's there's three, but three. one's a corn fairy guy. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> no. but how about, how about the jawline uh, taking over Adam Scott's title? Handsome Victor Perez, 6,100. Okay. Look at his recent form. Uh, the guy's playing lights out for the last month. Don't forget, Frenchman who moved next to St. Andrews to get more links experience in his repertoire. So one of the best links players in the world. Great ball striker. Yeah, actually, I do like. He uh, lurked at like Oak Hill VP last here. year at the PGA. Um, and he's playing great. 6,100. Same price as Phil. Um, famous Seamus, playing pretty good. But I'll go with Victor Perez. Um, think he's a better overall ball striker. And I just kind of like him. And then down in the fives, I mean, not there's only two guys actually in the fives that I'm going to play. Uh, one is a guy who won back-to-back on the Corn Ferry Tour and then qualified for the U.S. Open in a playoff. Uh, that's Harry Higgs, another another absolute legend on Twitter and just in interviews. Uh, don't forget, top five to Kiwa at the PGA. I'm looking at these these Southeast coast linksy type tracks. Again, this is inland, so you're not going to have the water, but it could get a little windy. 5,800. I mean, you went back to back on any tour. I don't care if it's corn, Terry, DP, whatever. That's impressive. Yeah. And 5,800. Again, we're not, we're just asking them to make the cut at this point. And then Nick Dunlap. Okay. Nick Dunlap. I knew we were going to go to Dunlap. Oh, he lurked last week at yeah, Memorial. He did have a good week last week. Okay. He won the U.S. Amateur about three miles away from here. And he, he won this other Amateur tournament at Pinehurst years ago. But I mean, for success in this part of the country, Alabama guy, very talented, won the Amex this year. I mean, the first guy since Phil to win as an amateur. Um, for 5,800, it'll be Higgs and Dunlap for me, and I will sprinkle both of them pretty good. And I, I think that's 
pretty much yeah i'm not going i'm not, in, going, I'm not going, going any deeper than that. that no no we're down to the depths already but um i think that's pretty good let's build a ladder let's do a ladder and then i'll take your pick to win how's that sound all right all right all right so ladder give me give me uh give me a, let's let's go let's go five ten twenty three guys or top i guess we want four right five ten twenty thirty top five top ten top twenty top thirty give me top five more to lock someone that's like a cam smith or somewhere in that range not not one of the obvious top guys who's going to be a top five staple in that range i mean i do i do cam cam is cam clear, smith clear away i'm starting my lineups this week yeah uh, yeah give me cam smith in that top five spot i think that's uh i think you're gonna get good value there pretty safe okay. safe-ish for that t5 too t10 how about either Hideki or Hatton? You don't like Hatton, so let's go with Hideki. Guys, he has a really good no, U.S. Open. I love oh, you his like blows. Hatton. Oh, okay. I love Hatton. You want to just watch Hatton. I love, <laughs> I love watching Hatton, and I root for him, too. Okay, so then how about we go Hideki 10 and Hatton 20, and then let's pick a bomb to go top 30. You, Dude, VP. I like Victor, Victor. Perez Yeah, at, I like at top it too. 30 there. Which we said before at the start of the show, you got to be playing well, and the guy has found something the last few weeks. I think we ride there right into I feel this like major. When he's on, he's on too. Like he, he, can he play gets such very good hot. golf. He gets very hot. Um, yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of guys down here. Uh, again, this pricing came out before Memorial was over. So, like Bez, I mean, Bez would have been probably seven thousand after yeah. that. Victor Perez probably would have been seven thousand. Dunlap would have not been fifty eight hundred. Um, but okay, and I, I put together a little lineup here. You want to okay? Hear give it? me the lineup, and then just tell me yeah, who. I assume you're gonna have your winner in there. So give me the give me uh, the lineup. Well, yeah, the obvious winner. Give me so the lineup. I, I got Scotty in there. Yep. Then we go to Cam Smith, Tommy Fleetwood, the Bez, Tom Kim, Victor Perez. Love it. I may have I may have an identical one already uh, percolating somewhere. If that's a great build, it'll probably be a popular remaining build. Salary, but okay. I love that. I, I like stars and scrub this week again because the pricing came out so early. You have a lot of guys that I think can lurk in this low range. Um, so you think? So you think Scotty, or are we gonna say that someone else can nip him? I'm I'm going to take Bryson on the hour. Bryson on I'm the hour. I'm take him at twenty to one. Twenty to one, Bryson. Love that, guys. Yeah. Excuse me. Lurked in the last two majors. Already won a U.S. Open. He's been doing. I think him and Morikawa are the two most due for the next major. I might take. I might have to. I mean, it's like because they have the field bet against scotty i think it's like minus 375 uh-huh. or something it's like do you eat that juice a little bit or is scotty just gonna win again like, listen i think scotty probably wins but a course like this that it just takes one bad bounce it, he, it could take one bad swing where you end up with a triple and then you're out of the tournament he did that last week it happened didn't hurt him it, it didn't hurt him i think he'll probably recover i like cam smith too i'm a little i'm a little nervous about the form but i'm gonna i'm gonna do it and if not you know what Talk about guys that are due. They keep putting themselves there at U.S. Opens. The 64 at Shinnecock, I think it was 63 or 64, sticks out to me. Great price. If you're talking 40 to 1 winner, I think Tommy. I think Tommy could do it. I really, I really do. I know, I I know he hasn't won in the U.S. yet, but he has plenty of other wins, plenty of other lurks. I just think his game is perfect. A ball striker who can play in those tough linksy around the green, difficult pitches and has to nail, he's gonna have to nail a couple putts when when the crunch time comes. But if you're telling me the winner's gonna be minus three, minus four, he's gonna be there. Tommy's gonna be there, I think. So I'm pumped. I can't wait. This is probably my favorite tournament to watch because it's so difficult. Um, I, so we'll see. Will Will anyone be able to take down Scotty? Is the question. I don't know. I, I think probably not. But um, I'm hoping at least come uh, come Father's Day Sunday afternoon we got some schwitzing going on. Could cousin Harris pull the miracle? I mean, that would be yeah, I do want to know. What, I do want to know what the biggest FedEx Cup like uh, first to second like lead is because oh, Scotty could be on on pace for it. He's yeah. got he's got a two thousand plus point lead right now, and he already like broke the money title again. And yeah. I, the craziest stat through this whole thing is that yesterday's win was the first win that he's had outside of February, March, or April in his career. That's insane that he's on like such an insane heater, first heater. quarter heater. And, and I mean, it's it's nuts. It's nuts what Scotty's doing. It is a pleasure to watch. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Um, but we'll see. Maybe one of these live boys will come in and, and pick him off uh, this week. You never know. It's the U.S. Open. We've seen a lot of crazy winners. Um, very difficult. The most difficult test in golf. So I'm pumped. Oh, yeah. Um, stay tuned. we got a lot of new products. Pod 15. I'll still get you 15% off on the website. Twitter will be all over it all week. Instagram. Um, good job behind the glass as always. Elo and Ferg. 
And what else? Just stick stick with it. Go with the guys you like. You want to root for guys that you like. There's so many. These are the best players in the world. Don't get too stressed over it. Enjoy the golf. Um, and listen, as they said, as Roy McAvoy did, just don't make a 12 on the last hole. <laughs> a la Tin Cup. And um, you might find yourself in contention this week at Pine Hash. So listen, hammer away. Take that aim. And B-O-L. Enjoy the open.